<laughs> Momly Conrad. Molly, the person who talks about things with people. Here we go. Back at it. Old rookies. Old yeller. The rookies are new people, right? That confuses me because the movie The Rookie is that old guy. So I just I haven't seen it. Inaccurately. I think it's about it baseball now. though, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hi guys. Welcome to Vase Face and Molly the Person's conversation. I think this might just be true of all INFJs, but or anyone of the same type, but I feel like when we talk, it's a nice reflection of yourself but not yourself, so it's helpful. Mm -hmm. Because whenever it's someone else, it's easier to see clearer, period. Yes, but usually with someone else, they have a different take, which Mm -hmm. we have different takes, but it's almost like the way we process information is very similar. So perspective or advice is, it's very unique when it comes from you. Or my friend Charlie, who's also nine of J. It's a, it's like you kind of have the same language, so there's some shorthand. It's like okay, you get it without it me having to exp- it, ex- yeah, it expedites it. Yeah, I'm the just, people want to know. I'm just afraid of death. I'm afraid of um, nothingness, like the ultimate end. Like I'm not afraid of like dying today or tomorrow, or think I have something that's gonna make me die get into an accident or something don't worry about that but I just you know ultimately I will die and that kind of sucks sucks to think about and so it makes me not that scared of living Mm. because you can do anything well can't do anything (laughs) and the whole nothing matters nothing matters there's a whole discussion about privilege in that but um, Uh. there's a lot that I can do and I do it hi (laughs) <laughs> getting there is like a list of tasks so it's just about how much you want it like will you complete the list <laughs> that's how mm-hmm. I think of it as of goals mm-hmm. and you just like feel it fear feel the fear and just do it, it takes even like not thinking about it just like blech, doing it <laughs> <laughs> like one of my groups I was really scared of to do it in the first session ugh, the amount of anxiety I had I don't even remember what I said <laughs> it was so horrible but now I think that's the best thing I've ever done professionally that group mm-hmm. so it was worth it yeah it's like pushing yourself out of the comfort zone to do the things that you imagine could be great and then sometimes they are great they have a pool Kaylee wants to go over there. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how warm would that you, pool is. Yeah, would you oh, swim in yeah. this water? I brought a bathing suit. <laughs> can, can we play? Um, Want to finish really quick in the sunroom? Sure. Wrapping it up? I just want... I, I'm goal-driven, and I want to do a lot of things, and I want to skydive. I want to, um, you know... I have the career I wanted and I wanted to be in love and I'm in love and I there's just a lot that I think of the things that I want to do as like a task list like a to-do list of tasks and everything nearly everything is possible as long as you complete the list it's just a matter of like time some money and you know labor Mm -hmm. but and so making new connections, like, I'll actually, like, ask people out on a friend date, just if I like them. I used to be more self-conscious about all that kind of stuff, but I feel like there's only so much time. Mm-hmm. It's hard to keep in perspective, but, like, it's not a new idea. I mean, we're all going to die, so just, this is it. Once you have everything checked off your list, then what? You make more on the list? That's, Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> Restlessness. I I do find I live a little bit on a racetrack. So I think I need to be better about... Well, you were saying earlier that I seem present, which I try to be. But I do think that's something I could work on. Mm-hmm.
instead of everything being idealistic. Yeah, it's interesting. We were talking about off camera trying to make things better, like control the situation and make it better in the future mm-hmm. instead of just like I think being satisfied with your life, you accept where you're at, but then also I have a growth mindset and you have a growth mindset. So we want to grow and push the people around us to grow and be better in certain ways and make, I mean, make the pasta a little better the next time, maybe like salt the water a little more or whatever, like adjust things so that they can be better. And, but you can't always make things better. And also part of, for me, I try to make things perfect and it's not just like, Oh, how can we improve this a little bit? It gets to a point of obsession Mm -hmm. to where I want, where I feel like there's, um, a best way that I'm trying to attain. And do you ever attain it and are satisfied? Sometimes temporarily, if I decide that it's the best it could be, I'll, and sometimes that's based on arbitrary factors like people's reactions or something Mm -hmm. that could be different, could have been different. Um, so it's, it's just a big pain, isn't it? Yeah. And it brings pain and suffering. (laughs) So it's like, can I stop doing that? (laughs) I don't know. It's funny you gave that example of making the pasta better because what came to my mind was like this idea I've had of like, I'm going to work through a cookbook and like, won't that be so fun? But it's, it's kind of the same symbol of what we're talking about. Like, well, what when that cookbook's over, like, do you settle into your favorite dishes? No, <laughs> I don't think so. New cookbook, <laughs> right? Like, just kind of like, that's how my life is. But it's, it's, to me, it's because there's scarcity. There's not, life will end. So I, you have to keep doing everything. You have to have, you have to have like 10 lives in one life. If that those things are, are enjoyable, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do it just for the sake because of it. Because achievement, like if the cookbook is for fun. Yes. Versus if it's for like, I don't know, getting a, an award. No award, just just, <laughs> just for fun. No, I've done everything. Mm. Everything I wanted. Um, two thoughts. One famous people a lot of times you'll see them they start coming up with a perfume or something like it Mm -hmm. they'll they'll act and then all of a sudden they're not to say like you're only an actor or you're only a singer because I do not like when people say that when humans have opinions about politics or something it's like yeah but they're also a human and they can contribute to the conversation because everyone else is your aunt Sally is so sure like anyone else can yeah it's the idea to me the human condition that to never be satisfied mm. and to always strive for more. And I think that looks different in a lot of people. Some people will, it can turn to like alcoholism or something, trying to fill this void. Some people can try and achieve more and do more. Some people can feel enmeshed with their family and try and associate more with the people around them to where, or like lose their identity a bit. Just anything to fill that void or to like, yeah. And I think, I think that's natural for humans to do that. And everyone has their own stuff. And my, my stuff is like control and perfectionism. Mm-hmm. And trying to find like the best answer and the best way and be my best self. Never enough is probably a key human condition. I think you're right. Whether that's about self or a romantic relationship or career or, yeah, family. It's applied to everything. But so I think it's difficult to be able to enjoy your life and also push yourself and also grow and also do things but also rest. It's like finding all of that balance in one life like hard left of maybe something that wouldn't be put in a video but I think there is a way it could be but I'm reminded I I can say I'm reminded of 
the things in life that jolt you being in the present. Like some people say they get that from a a meditative practice. Some people say that that comes from like taking psychedelics or I think everyone has their own way that is probably their own personal mindful thing. Mm -hmm. But I find that to be maybe a key in life are, I don't know, ways to slow down and be present. But I think they're particular to the person. Just like whatever their specific thing is. Yeah, people could call it a flow state. Like, there's a lot of names for the same thing. But Yeah. But so, like, someone agonizing about whether or not they used a coupon... And they just left, they already left the store and they should have used that coupon. That might be their obsession that they're thinking about coupons constantly. So maybe their meditative practice is more, I don't know. Well, it, I think it would be even more unique to the person beyond that specific thing. Yes. Yeah, like it would be like their. What works for them specifically? Yeah, like bird watching. Yeah, yeah. Like, for me, it's like water. I mm. need to be in water. Connection, yeah. like deep connection with friends, like what mm-hmm. we're doing now. The other day, just doing nothing, like having a day off, and I'm on vacation, too, which you'd think it would be easier to do nothing, but it's harder, because you feel like, oh, I need to be having fun, I need to be seeing the sights, I need to be, and it was, like, rainy, and no one was doing anything, everyone was just sitting around at the house, and I took a nap, I drank some tea, and it felt scandalous, <laughs> but, like, by the end of the day, I was like, whoa, I forgot what it feels like to live life for no one and nothing. Mm-hmm. Just to kind of be all day, mm-hmm. not even watch TV. So what if you did that for your lifetime instead of your checklist? <sighs> I'm not saying that's the better option. I'm just curious what that is. I definitely need out. more of it. I mm-hmm. think there must be a balance. But... Yeah, maybe that is, like, the good life. But then you also want to live a productive... I guess you want to be a productive member of society and contribute something. Yeah, that does And that. also we talked about, like, it's a little bit of privilege being like, oh, should I just do nothing or should I do everything? Like, so much Both privilege. of those options are... There's the, even the situation I was in. I was in someone's grandfather's home on, the, on Cape Cod. <laughs> like... Yeah. Oh, it is so wonderful to do nothing. I have nothing to do, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think it applies, again, to, like, the specific person. Whatever that would be. Yeah, I think one thing, if you're looking for what that is for you, mindfulness-wise, like, the five senses, I feel like there's one that people tend to be drawn to, and I just discovered mine's sounds. So if I'm like trying to take a minute and you know the five four three two one thing, mm-hmm. so you explain it. I don't know it specifically. Um, so it's a grounding technique. So you can do it when you're having a lot of anxiety or even a panic attack, and um, or you're feeling like out of your body, you're dissociated. You focus on your immediate surroundings using your five senses, and so. Um, I don't do the five, four, three, two, one. I just do five for all because I don't remember which one applies to what. Okay, that's what I was curious but about. You it's do probably five seeing five things. Yeah, because it's one like color, the right? Easiest. Or just five things, like noticing the chair, just really noticing. It's it's supposed to be very grounding. It is. It's hard to do that when you're flooded. It's really and hard. Super anxious and hard emotional or whatever. It's hard to yeah get there, but sometimes. I I just started noticing that I feel more grounded when I'm like listening to certain sounds. That's the one that soothes you the most. Of Wait, them so all. we didn't finish explaining. Or it grounds me more. Okay. So <laughs> I to keep it simple, just say five for all. Mm-hmm. So five things you see, five things that you smell, five things that you hear, taste, touch. I might have said two of the same. Um which is really hard. Five things that you taste, like... 
I think that go, <laughs> that's the one. That must be one. But I just think when people are anxious, they don't remember which one is which. And mm-hmm. I think that can be more anxiety inducing and then they won't do it. So I don't know. But anyways, that's the practice. And so for you, it's the things that you hear. That's the more soothing. That's interesting. Another thing, it's not even soothing. I'm able to come back to reality quicker because of it. So I guess, yeah, soothing. For some reason, I can't... Oh, you can find it. Like, yeah, that I can find it You're better. tuned to sound. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. These people. <laughs> These children. That's cool. I'd what have do you to think, think about... Is? It's well, it's obviously not taste. Yeah, definitely not. Like, Not smell. Yeah, mine's not touch either. Like, I am so disassociated from that. That's one of your love languages. I was just thinking it might be uh, text. Yeah. It's not something that I'm aware of, but finding awareness of it has always helped me. Mm -hmm. Like yoga or something. It's like mindful attention to the body is always better for me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Another way to find some sort of mindfulness in your daily life is to find something novel out of an everyday experience. Mm. So like your same daily walk, like you notice one thing that you've never noticed before. Mm. So it could be like someone's fence or an animal or a car or Mm. the way that someone, um, oh, your neighbor has a dog or your neighbor has a daughter. Noticing new. Mm -hmm. I like that. Even if it's in your house, too. Just some everyday thing that you've never... Hmm. You find a new detail. (laughs) What if it's, like, dust? (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Well, I'm sure, like, any mindfulness practice, you're supposed to have, like, you know... No judgment. You're supposed to notice it and let it pass. Or (laughs) even notice the judgment and let it pass. Um, I try to write in my gratitude journal every night three things from that day that I'm grateful for. That on bad days that can be hard. Science says that works. It does. Science. I used to be a pessimist and now I'm an optimist. So it's helpful. Also, Plus. if anyone else is scared of dying, there's a great book called Staring into the Sun by Irvin Yalom. It's freaking good. That's kind of what we're doing. So I feel bad because you're going to have to edit this. And get, <laughs> no. What a nightmare. This is going to be a this little This is wild. a nightmare. And I, it's been so long that I've recorded a video. I should have been more thoughtful and not talked forever. Mm -mm. You're a guest on my channel. I have way too many videos of me just talking. So this is nice. How should we wrap up? This is Vase Face. Look at my floral. I'm tired. She looks so cool. Yeah. Goodbye. (laughs) Oh no. I promise it's not 2 a.m. Well, you can tell from the light, but if this feels like a 2 a.m. situation where it doesn't end. Good night.